Christmas. Hi there, Michael. So understanding what that threshold is means looking at the peaks of the first and the second wave. What have we learned from those first two waves? Yeah, that's right, Sally. The experts saying that we may be on the edge of a crisis, but not quite there in terms of the actual data itself. But let's focus very quickly on the first and the uh, second waves, and we'll give you a sense of uh, where we are uh, possibly when it comes to a third wave study. We're going to start with the second wave. First of all, just to show you how quickly the case is ramped up, the 11th of November, 1,690 cases averaging over a seven-day period. Two months later, Sally, the 11th of January, we were above 19,000 per day on average uh, over a seven-day period. So in other words, the caseload, the new caseload, got 11 times bigger in the space of just two months. Let's go to the first wave now. You're seeing the numbers there, Sally. On the 13th of May, the average around about 600, 610. It goes all the way up, Sally, to 12,500 new cases on a daily basis just two months later. So again, 20 times the new caseload over roughly 60 days. Now, you mentioned that threshold, Sally, in terms of figuring out uh, whether a third wave has begun. Essentially, the threshold is 30% of the peak in the second wave. And we did the maths, uh, Sally. The threshold for a third wave would be around about 5,600 cases per day over a seven-day period. So averaging around about 5,600 cases per day. At the moment, we're averaging about 1,950 cases. So roughly, Sally, uh, we are around about a third of the way to that threshold. So we've still got some way to go before technically we are, in fact, in a, another wave of the pandemic. But I want to focus very quickly on why the health department has raised the alarm. We're going to look at the total number of cases, Sally, uh, for the previous week and then compare it to the week before that. Take a look at the numbers. 26th of April to the 2nd of May, 8,600 cases in that entire week, roughly speaking. And the following week, Sally, take a look at what happens. We're talking about 12,530 cases in that seven-day period. So in one week, we've seen that caseload climb by almost 50%. That's why the health department's come out with that statement and said, guys, mm. We need to hit the brakes on this thing as quickly as possible. Now, just let's keep those on the screen because I get confused easily with numbers. That 3rd to 9 May, 12,500 odd, that's the whole seven days. Correct. You then divide it into seven to get your average, which, as you say, is around 1,900. Yes. Just before, yes. and no, we don't want anyone to freak out. Yeah. Um, and and the, the worrying danger point yeah. is when we're getting close to between five and 6,000 daily cases over a seven-day period, so that would be 6, 12, 18, 6, 7s or 42. So when we get to around 40,000 in a week, that's the danger period for the third wave, right? Yeah, absolutely, and that's where the alarm bells going off and they uh, start going off and they start to say this thing could get progressively worse very, very quickly. So that's the threshold at the moment. In terms of that threshold, we're about a third of the way to that particular threshold. But as you've explained, it can move up so yeah. very quickly. Um, we are now seeing spikes in several provinces. Yeah. Uh, the Free State is already in its third wave. Uh, the Northern Cape, I think they said, has actually never really come out of its second wave, yeah. and now it's jumping again. So it's interesting that we're seeing particular concern. Obviously, we're seeing spikes everywhere, but the rural provinces are a bit worrying. Yeah, I want to take you through those numbers quickly, Sally, and you'll get a uh, a fright when you look at the Northern Cape, in fact. We're going to look at the week ending on the 9th of May, compare it to the week ending on the 2nd of May, and take a look at these increases. The Western Cape, 39%. The Northwest, just above 40%. Limpopo, Sally, 47%. Uh, Gauteng, which was once the epicenter and dominated the headlines, 63%, maybe not surprising, but the Northern Cape is the top province in this respect nearly a 70% surge in terms of the numbers, Sally. And just in terms of active cases, the Northern Cape now accounts for about 16% of all the active cases in South Africa, and it makes up just 2% of the national population. So something clearly is going wrong 
in that province, Sally. We'll need to get to grips with that as quickly as possible. Mm. It's interesting, the percentages, the jump is so big for the percentages, but clearly it's the raw numbers the Department of Health looks at because it's the raw numbers. Those represent people who could get sick, who could end up in hospital, taking up an ICU bed. And when those beds are full, we are in trouble. So it's interesting that the raw numbers, that data is what determines our third wave. Yeah, absolutely. And the raw numbers in the Northern Cape are really quite concerning, especially when you look at the course of the pandemic uh, over the last year or so. And uh, the, the percentage is also important, Sally, because they show uh, the potential pressure that the hospital and clinics are going to have to deal with. When you have a rapid surge in terms of the numbers, that spells trouble because we're not always certain that those hospitals and clinics have the capacity to deal with a large amount of pressure in a small amount of time. Yeah, so that shows the speed with which it is coming at us. Thank you so much, Michael Marulia. Those numbers tell us a very important story.